Hi, everyone, and welcome to a new episode of Exploring the Metaverse. My name is Sahil Bansal, and I'm excited to welcome Sebastian Kerpel of Vodafone. Today, we're going to talk about immersive AR, distributed compute, and how Vodafone is accelerating the ecosystem for both consumer and enterprise users. Sebastian, it's great to have you with us here today. Uh, before we get into the details of the Hyperreality Hub, can you tell us a little bit more about your background and why you're passionate and excited for immersive AR and XR in general? Yeah, sure. Uh, so it started basically five years ago uh, when I was uh, uh, at Vodafone Germany in the IT. Um, I was basically uh, yeah, a solo fighter in, in terms of XR. Uh, I was the, the ambassador running around all the company, um, explaining XR to everyone and trying to convince that this is going to be a thing in the next year or in the next two years. And now my team is around uh, 30, 40 people all over uh, Germany, even over the, the whole world. So we have a team in Cairo, we have a team in, in Dresden, uh, the Tech Innovation Center. Um, we have people in Munich, um, yeah, basically all over Germany, uh, working for us. So we have uh, developers, designers, um, a lot of people um, uh, for product management and, and stuff like this. So this topic uh, finally became that what I was dreaming of uh, uh, like five years ago. So in February, you announced the Hyperreality Hub, and we understand that it aims to uh, unlock uh, the adoption of immersive AR uh, by enabling smaller, uh, lightweight, sleeker AR designs. Can you tell us a little bit more about the Hyperreality Hub and how it docks into your vision for XR and immersive AR specifically? Yeah, exactly. So um, the Hyperreality Hub is basically the solution uh, for a problem that uh, most of the big companies, uh, most of the big XR uh, headset um, uh, producers have. So it's uh, packing a lot of uh, technology in small things that you wear on your head, basically. So um, some of this uh, could be um, outsourced to something that we call Hyperreality Hub which is basically a little computer uh, with a, a Snapdragon chip, of course, um, and it enables us to uh, move the sensors, move the computing power, the AI computing power, um, to move all of this um, out of the headset, away from the headset, to uh, a, yeah, a router-like uh, device. Got it, okay. And um, what are some of the capabilities of that hyperreality hub? Yeah, so um, first of all, you can, uh, for example, have much more powerful graphics with this device because you can have a, a very powerful GPU uh, that enables uh, users to do remote rendering, uh, which means much better quality of, uh, of graphics, uh, which is crucial for a reality uh, uh, experience, virtual reality. The better the graphics, the more real it feels, the more immersive it is. Mm -hmm. Um, then you have the, uh, the power to um, yeah, compute very uh, large language models uh, for AI. So this is a hot topic for our customers at the moment. Um, so therefore, yeah, uh, it really helps to outsource this and be able to have, for example, uh, you know, seven, 7 billion or even 12 billion uh, uh, mega uh, or um, 12 billion, billion sized models of AI. Yeah. Great. So, so how does um, the capabilities and the technical features of the Hyperreality Hub um, uh, kind of go into use cases for everyday uh, consumer and enterprise users? Mm -hmm. uh, so we are talking at the moment uh, three different uh, use cases. So uh, one, and it's my favorite one actually, is the uh, healthcare industry. Um, so we are uh, planning to bring the devices to hospitals, uh, which enables doctors to wear very, uh, very sleek uh, headsets uh, that yeah, basically look like normal glasses as you wear in, or as we have it, uh, have it here. Um, so that uh, keeps all the, the computing power away from the doctor's head. Uh, he has uh, just a normal pair of glasses on his head and he can, he can basically see um, uh, all the information that he needs on, uh, on a patient. It's not, not only for the doctors, it's also for the caring uh, personnel, uh, it's for the for the nurses. So uh, imagine a nurse uh, looking in a in a room with uh, many patients, and uh, she can understand with one glance. Uh, okay, who is what's the name of the patients? What is the, the diseases? What is the treatment? Which doctor is caring for them? All of this kind of information without having a, a huge computer on your head, or even uh, you know, I mean, old school would be to use a, a piece of paper where all all the information is written. Um, so that's that's one of our dreams. The, the second use case would be the um, uh, the education one. 
So imagine you have a classroom with a lot of, with a lot of pupils um, uh, having all very cheap glasses, which is possible now because you don't have all the sensors or the computing power in these expensive uh, bulky glasses anymore. So you can have really sleek glasses um, on the, uh, on, in the classroom. So you talked a little bit about um, on-device AI processing, which of course is one of the capabilities of the Snapdragon processor in addition yeah. to uh, some of the other technical features. So how, can you go into a little bit more detail of how um, AI uh, on the Hyperreality Hub can improve the overall user experience? Yeah, uh, that's a good question. Um, and that's also um, something we, we um, put a lot of effort in it uh, because the and uh, even the operating system of the Hyperreality app will be an AI-powered agent. So it's not like you have an interface or something, you have a lot of UI buttons. It's basically an avatar that you see, that you can interact with as if you would interact with a real human. Uh, we call her Vida, uh, but you can change her uh, your appearance or everything. Uh, you could, you, uh, she will adapt to your character, for example, so she will understand, okay, you are more like the funny guy, you are more like the uh, scientific guy or whatever. Um, and then she will adapt and she will understand your nature, your character, and, and she will evolve her own character. So and that's, that's uh, in our opinion, uh, a much better way to interact with machines in the future, to interact with them as if they are your friends, your assistants, your partners, whatever you call them. That's cool. Yeah. So we totally share your uh, vision for XR devices and the need for them to be smaller, sleeker, lighter weight, you know, on the AR glasses. Yeah. Um, can you talk a little bit more about some of the technical hurdles that need to be overcome to enable that vision? Yeah. Um, so the one thing that you can't really outsource in a, in a headset uh, is the battery, basically. So what we can do with outsourcing all the computing power and the sensors, what I mentioned before, uh, is to reduce the, um, the battery uh, or the, the need for a bigger battery. Uh, so the battery is really only responsible for powering the, um, uh, the glasses displays. Yeah. And that will that helps a lot to overcome the the bulkiness of the devices, and also yeah will uh, uh, prolong the uh, the battery usage. Got it. So five G and connectivity we know is a very essential part of uh, the XR experience and bringing the hyper reality hub with the uh, immersive AR glasses to life. Um, however, we know uh, and believe that Vodafone you know has a broader charter. Uh, particularly around the ecosystem. Can you talk a little bit more about some of the specific initiatives that Vodafone is taking uh, to broaden the ecosystem and adoption of immersive AR? Yeah, that's also a good point or a very important point uh, in our view. So um, our approach is to, uh, yeah, to enable or to even push the, uh, hardware, um, uh, the hardware makers in the direction of supporting uh, um, uh, platforms like, like uh, Snapdragon Spaces, uh, since this is the only way to have, uh, you know, um, yeah, to have certain apps or all of the apps that are developed uh, working on different devices. So as of now, you you create applications for devices, and you have to, to create them create them over and over again. I have to create the the app for um, uh, for Meta Quest, uh, then for an X3 Air, whatever uh, Lenovo glasses, and and all together. And the, the idea is to really develop it once and it works out of the box on all devices that uh, are powered by a Snapdragon Spaces, a Snapdragon uh, chip. Great. Thanks so much, Sebastian. It was great yep. to have you on the show. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you. Thanks for watching the latest episode of Exploring the Metaverse. We hope you enjoyed it. Click here for more episodes on our channel.